Hello guys and welcome back to another true crime video. Today's case focuses on one of the youngest child killers in America. His name is Eric Smith and his victim was Derek Robbie. This case is extremely graphic and morbid, so I will give you plenty of warning of when the graphic stuff will come up. Please, viewer discretion is advised. Eric M. Smith was born on the 22nd of January, 1980, in the area of Steuben County, New York, to parents Randy Hevner and Tammy Smith. It is believed that during his mother's pregnancy, Tammy had been prescribed and in turn taken an epilepsy drug called triiodone. Triiodone is known to cause numerous birth defects, but when Eric appeared into the world, he was healthy. When Eric was just a toddler, his father began denying that Eric was his own child and left Tammy a single mother. Following the departure of Randy, a paternity test was taken, which proved that Randy was the father of little Eric. With this test, Randy was ordered by a county court to pay child support. Randy agreed to this but continued to stay far away from Tammy and Eric. Eric grew up believing that his father had abandoned him, something Tammy was not shy to admit to others and her child. However, at the age of nine years old, Tammy finally told Eric who his father was. Although Eric had little to no contact with Randy, Tammy had begun sleeping with him again and the pair had another child. Therefore, Eric would witness his father coming to the home to take the couple's daughter out for the day, yet Eric was never invited. Those close to Eric stated that this was when Eric began to have a behavioral shift due to this trauma. Although his own father had completely deserted him, Eric still had a father figure in the shape of his mother's new husband, Teddy Smith. Teddy would go on to adopt Eric, and at times Teddy would be the good and compassionate father Eric always wanted especially when it came to understanding Eric and the bullying he was receiving at school. Yet, Ted had a violent side and it would abuse Eric. Therefore, not only was Eric getting bullied and beaten in school, he was also receiving it at home. Although home life wasn't always happy, Eric found comfort in the relationship he had with his grandparents, Red and Eddie Wilson. He would frequently visit the pair and his grandfather spoke of how Eric would always arrive with a smile on his face and give loads of hugs and kisses. It was unknown if his grandparents knew what was going on at home with Ted. As Eric continued to age and move through the school years, the bullying he became subject to intensified. With bright red hair and freckles, he was made the target at school and as a teenager, Eric would be seen cycling around the town for hours on end alone. It was known that Eric had no friends. As he progressed through education, Eric was then told he needed an eye prescription and he began wearing thick-rimmed glasses on a daily basis. This again spurred on the bullying, along with the fact that Eric's ears had now started to protrude. With all the constant bullying at home and at school, Eric then developed a severe speech impediment and due to the lack of concentration, Eric was kept back an additional year at school. This ridicule was too much for Eric, and he would soon snap with anger. It was reported that as a young child, Eric began to torture and kill animals. Most people know this is the number one trademark sign of a psychopath. Around the time that Eric began torturing animals, he learned that he may have developmental delays due to the epilepsy medication his mother was taking during pregnancy. By the age of 13, Eric had only reached 5th grade. Although Eric normally kept to himself, his mother did confess in the health meetings that Eric was a sweet and helpful boy, but also very badly tempered and hyperactive. By 1993, Eric was boiling on the brim of an explosion. Not only was his stepfather abusing him, his own biological father had disowned him. He had no friends and was constantly being bullied at school. The town that Eric lived in was quite secluded. There was only really around 970 people. Even though the town was small, over the years it had witnessed numerous tragedies, including two teenagers who had been killed by a drunk driver and another road accident, which took a life of a high school senior. Eric had also lost a classmate in the car accident, and he had taken a great thrill of ringing this boy's family home and asking to speak to the deceased boy. 
On August 2, 1993, 13-year-old Eric was riding his bike to a summer day camp that had been set up in a local park. Four-year-old Derek Robbie was also walking alone to the same camp. Derek's mother reported how she would normally walk Derek to the top of the driveway as she could see the park from there and known he had arrived safely. However, on the second, she was busy trying to calm down Derek's younger brother. Derek only had one block to walk, no crossing roads or side roads as the road led directly to the park. She therefore agreed that her son could walk alone and with no supervision. This was the first time she had ever let Derek go anywhere alone. Unfortunately, no sooner had Derek left the house, he crossed paths with Eric Smith. Eric then lured Derek to follow him to the remote wooded area nearby. It is believed that Eric had told Derek that he knew a shortcut to the summer camp. Once here, Eric beat Derek badly with a rock, dropping two large rocks onto his head before strangling him. Derek was dead instantly. Derek's fragile body laid still and Eric violently sodomized the dead child's body with a stick. As Eric stood there and looked at the horrific crime he had committed, he noticed Eric's lunch bag and decided to pour some of the Kool-Aid drink into the deep wound on Derek's head. Eric then took off Derek's left sneaker and placed it into his right hand, and then took off his right sneaker and placed it into his left hand. Eric then posed Derek's body. Following this, Eric calmly collected his bag and returned home as if nothing had ever happened. It had only been five minutes since Derek had left his house. At around 11am, Doreen, Derek's mom, went to pick up Derek from the summer camp program. Upon arrival, she was informed that her son had never came to the park and had not been seen by anyone. She immediately rang the police. Derek was a good child and he had never been out alone and therefore was unlikely to divert from the route he was given, mostly out of his good nature but also because he would have became nervous. The search party for Derek involved over 300 people including the summer camp workers, the police and neighbours. Ted Smith and Eric Smith were also involved in the search. The body of Derek was found four hours later. The wounds covering Derek's body were too much for the police to handle, and therefore the Robbie family were restricted from seeing the body. At the same time, Eric's grandfather had a suspicion that something was wrong with Eric. He believed Eric was hiding something from the family, he just didn't know what. At first, Eric was not seen as the person of interest, but he decided to go to the police station to discuss the murder. Eric began telling the police that he had not seen Derek on the day of his murder, but soon changed his story. Eric then claimed he had been standing opposite the open field when he had seen Derek, placing him pretty much at the exact same place where the murder had been committed. When further questioned, Eric stated that he had seen Derek wearing a white t-shirt and had his lunchbox in his hand. During the conversation, the police pushed Eric to talk about where Derek went next, it is reported that upon being asked this question, Eric clenched his fist and accused the detectives of thinking he had killed Derek. Eric, however, returned to the station later on and spoke of the violent attack that had been performed on Derek's body, something that the police had not yet disclosed. However, even though Eric's behavior was suspicious and he only knew information the killer could, the police just thought maybe Eric had witnessed something and the trauma he had was preventing him from telling them more. The next day, Eric was asked calmly by the police to cycle his bike up to where he had last seen Derek. Eric had been relaxed and happy when completing this task for the police, but it soon emerged that Eric could not have seen everything he claimed from the place in which he stopped. The point where Eric stopped was covered by bushes and so there wasn't even a 1% chance that Eric could have seen anything if Derek was behind them. To add more evidence against Eric, the police were informed that Eric had asked what would happen if the murderer was a child. One of the women responded to Eric that the child would need psychiatric help. He also questioned the process of DNA testing, but the adults refused to react to this. Before long, police had decided that the murderer could have well been a child and highlighted how the banana in Derek's lunchbox had been purposely squashed. It was seen that this could have been an act from a child as some children don't like certain fruits and vegetables. As a test, a woman from the community was asked to go to the local shop 
and buy ice cream, nuts, bananas, and syrup, and told the local children that she was going to make sundaes. And of course, only one child asked for no bananas. Who do you think that child was? It was Eric Smith. Five days later, Derek was buried, and two days after the funeral, Eric confessed his parents to what he had done. Carl Peters, Eric's great-grandfather, took Eric to the police station where he was arrested. At the news of Eric's arrest, the Savona community was left speechless and stunned. Many were shocked that a child could have murdered another child. Some were angry at Eric, whereas some sympathized with him, claiming that he must have grown up in a horrible household. Shortly after his confession, Eric was subject to a psychiatric examination where he was eventually diagnosed with IED, Intermittent Explosive Disorder, which causes people to erupt with violence unexpectedly. When he was asked why he committed the crime, Eric calmly stated, because instead of me being hurt, I was hurting someone else. A jury found him guilty of second-degree murder in 1994. He was sentenced to nine years to life in prison. Smith has been denied parole multiple times, since 2002 and most recently in January 2020. Following the trial and conviction of Eric, it was revealed that Ted Smith had been involved in in attacking Eric's sister sexually and may have also sexually assaulted Eric. Following his conviction, Eric decided to write an apology letter to Derek's family. Eric Smith is now 41 years old and still remains in jail. Okay, that is the end of today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and what do you think of this case? Let me know what you thought by commenting down below. Thanks so much, guys, and stay tuned for more.